former M NFL MVP, Offensive Player of the Year, five-time Pro Bowler, College Football Hall of Famer, future Pro Football Hall of Famer, LaDainian Tomlinson. How are you, LT? I'm great, Rich. How are you, my friend? I am doing well. I want to start with that Minnesota-Seattle uh, game with you. Yes. What's the coldest game you ever played in, LT? Uh, it had to be – it was either 2004 or 2005 – Heck, maybe even 2003. It was Cleveland, at Cleveland. It was late in the season. It was actually the first time we clinched our division championship, the FC West, uh, when I was with the Chargers. And I guess it was it was single digits, but the wind chill was right at zero, or probably negative. Rich, it was so cold. I kid you not. It was when Drew Brees was the quarterback. Drew Brees couldn't talk in the huddle. His jaws kept locking up, so no, he sounded kid. like this. All right, birdie slant. Birdie slant. Like, what the hell? What What are you saying? His jaws kept – it was so cold, his jaws locked up on him. It was unbelievable. And, and, and with this game, I love that, with this game with Marshawn Lynch hadn't played in, in a month and a half, coming off of the hernia surgery – what do you think of uh, of his ability to be effective and be the beast mode that Seattle is hoping he can be in these conditions? Well, I, I tell you what, um, it, it's going to – Marshawn is the type of guy, you know, it's not like he, he jumps from hole to hole and makes sharp cuts. He's coming downhill, and you got to grab him, you got to wrap him up and bring him to the ground. He's going to break tackles. And, and that's his. that's what Marshawn does. So he's he's more like – He's going to beat you up for four quarters. You know, it's not like, you know, Adrian Peterson, on the other hand, he's looking for the home run. He might cut and slash, and then he's looking to go 50 or 60. Marshawn is just going to beat you up. So I think, you know, I think he'll be fine, honestly. I, you know, I, he should be healthy enough. It's not like he hasn't been doing anything in practice and leading up to this, this point that – you know, he should be ready to go now. How effective will Adrian Peterson be against the top-ranked rush defense? I mean, he's, it, this is so great. The rushing leader, this is going to be the 10th time ever that a rushing leader from a regular season faces that regular season's best rush defense in the playoffs. What a, what a matchup this is going to be. I'd love to pick your brain on that one. W what a matchup, Rich. You're absolutely right. But, here's, you know, we know Adrian only 18 yards in their first matchup, but he only had eight carries. I expect them to lean on him heavily. And, and obviously, he's going to have a better game. Not saying that he's going to average five or six yards a carry. I don't think that'll happen. But I, I think he'll average right around four yards a carry because he'll get enough attempts. Um, but in the end, that Seattle defense is just too tough. They're going to make Minnesota one-dimensional. We that's, that's the game plan. We know what they're going to do. So Cam Chancellor and those boys, they're going to be up close to the line of scrimmage, and they're going to bring Adrian Peterson down. Don't let him get the home run. Make Teddy Bridgewater prove to you that he can beat you. Who wins it then? What do you think? I think Seattle wins it. I think, honestly, Rich, I think they're on their, their way to possibly uh, – another third, you know, the third straight NFC championship. You know, I, I really do. I think they're on their way. They're playing the best football, I think, right now in the NFC. Now, people may argue Carolina, but to me, I think Seattle right now, because of that championship pedigree and all the things that they have been through over the last two years, coupled that with the way that Russell Wilson has now been playing it at an elite status, I think Seattle might be the dark horse to win the, the NFC again. LaDainian Tomlinson joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. The Kansas City Chiefs, this rushing attack without Jamal Charles is one of the many underreported Kansas City Chiefs-related uh, football accomplishments this year. How have they been able to do this with these kids minus Jamal Charles, LT? Well, I, I, for one, I think they have an excellent coaching staff, and it starts with Andy Reid, obviously. But – the running back coach, Eric Bieniemy. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, man, this guy is, he's a star in the making. Just like with Hugh Jackson, what we saw with Hugh, I think Eric Bieniemy is the next coach to be, you know, a sin into a coordinator job or a possible head coach down the line. I'm just saying that because it, he, he's the reason why those young guys are performing the way they're performing. I went to the Chiefs training camp, and the one thing that I saw, 
Eric Bieniemy on the field before practice started with those young guys, Spencer Ware, Chuck Hendrick West. He was out there working with them, Rich, getting them ready just in case something like this happened. So that's why they're performing like that because of the coach. Who's the best team in the AFC? What do you got? I, I, you know, <laughs> the, the AFC to me is so balanced, is equally balanced, you know, with, with the top teams, I think. At the end of the day, you always have to say, who has the best defense? And to me, that's Denver. They have home field advantage, and they have the best defense. So that tells me that Denver is the best team in the AFC. But let me tell you something. Them boys in Kansas City. Now, if Denver has to match up with Kansas City again, Mm -hmm. that's going to be their toughest game in the playoffs because Kansas City very well could beat them because they know how to beat them. They did it before. Well, that was a game where Manning got pulled in that game that he set the record for most – most yards passing, and then uh, and then his foot gave way, and now he's back in the mix. Ladanian, when when he came in the game against uh, against San Diego, it, it the running game suddenly magically reappeared, and a lot of people are saying it's because Peyton put them in the right plays. W- what did you see? That's you're exactly right. Peyton put them in the right plays, and, and that's the thing that Peyton provides for you. You know the ability to know. You know, as as we all say, how to read your mail when he goes up to the line of scrimmage. He is the best ever at playing the game from the line of scrimmage. And so if Peyton is on his game and he has figured out what you like to do, that's what happens when he goes to the line of scrimmage. He's going to get you in the right play. Rather, it's a run or a pass. So um, – I always said, Rich, that back when he got hurt and Brock took over, I said, if Peyton is healthy, you have to play Peyton. You have to for that very reason. He's going to put you in the right play. What do you think of the op- possibility, LT, that that might be the last game of the Chargers known as the San Diego Chargers? What do you think of that? Well, you know, I think uh, I think it's been a great run, if it is. You know, um, obviously a sad time for – if it's going to be, it's a sad time for that city. Having played there and, as I say, became a man in that city of San Diego, um, I understand what the fans are feeling because they have such a passion and an affection for the San Diego Chargers. And they, they uh, you know, so the thought of losing that – is um, I'm sure it, it's it's hard for everybody to swallow, and they're they're upset about it. There's no question about it. They're upset about it. But the good thing, Rich, I believe, is you still have the opportunity to go support them, because they're you know they'll be they'll be you know an hour away, hour and a half away. You still have that opportunity to go support them. Now it may not be, and it won't be the San Diego Chargers no more, but they will still be Chargers. Yeah, I know that's gonna be a tough sell. For, yeah, for, I know. I know. That'd be a very tough sell for a lot of fans to 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 drive up another hour and look at their team, and they're called the LA Chargers, and I, I don't even know what to make of it. I think it's entirely possible nothing happens with the vote next week. I very really, possible. I very, really very that. possible. Could it, you? To me, there's there's no certainty uh, right now in LA that there's going to be a stadium even ready. Mm-hmm. You know, so oh yeah, I mean so for how, sure. How can you vote on saying yeah, let's let's have an organization or two mm-hmm. go to L.A.? How, how do you vote like that if you're an owner? Do you have any thoughts on the national championship game? I know your I, TCU uh, your TCU Horn Frogs certainly uh, shocked everyone in the Alamo Bowl with a 31 point comeback. Yeah, Rich. You know, we just keep knocking them down until like we it. get some respect. We're just going to keep knocking them down. Mm-hmm. You know, our old coach, Dutch Meyer, um, you know, he phrased the, the saying of fight them to hell freezes over, then fight them on the ice. And that's what we do as Horned Frogs, my friend. I know you're a Michigan Wolverine, man. But us TCU guys, Rich, we fight them to hell freezes over. Okay. And we fight them on the ice. I hear you. I like okay. it. Look at so you. So the, the national championship game, I think Clem- Clemson shocks them. I really do because I, I believe – with the quarterback Watson, they have that ability, you know, to get out of the pocket and escape the rush from Alabama. And all the teams that have beaten Alabama have all had mobile quarterbacks. So that's the key to me. Yeah. 
Have you spoken to Boykin of TCU at all, LT? Do you know the kid? Uh, I, I have spoken with him throughout the year. I have not spoken with him since um, the uh, situation mm -hmm. happened. I hear you. Uh, and before I let you go, um, my last guest of the day is somebody that you've worked with before and have talked with before, LaDainian Tomlinson. Who would uh, that he, be, Rich? He goes by just one name. Okay. Elmo. <laughs> In studio. I've got yes. Elmo here. How about that? My old friend Elmo. Yeah. Can you tell him hello for me? I will do that. What was the word that you, uh, that you were, was the word of the day when you were with Elmo? Celebration. <laughs> celebration, Rich. That was celebration? Is what you're talking about? <laughs> I love it. So, so did you teardrop on Elmo? Is that what you did? Yes. Well, I didn't do the teardrop. We, okay. Actually, I did teardrop. Yes, I did teardrop on Elmo. <laughs> I did. That was my celebration. <laughs> that was your celebration <laughs> at Sesame Street. Yeah, I will tell, I will send Elmo your best later on. Please. You, you bet. <laughs> and I'll see you, I'll see you at the shop over the weekend, okay? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I'll see, I'll oh, see you soon. Okay, that's LT, LaDainian Tomlinson, at LT underscore 21. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.